Welcome to the first video on stoichiometry, this first lesson 1.1. It's just going to be a quick introduction into the nature of science and some of the background chemistry that you've hopefully covered before. Moving into it, these are the objectives. First of all, nature of science, that is now going to be in your exam. So let's cover that at the start of this unit. A theory, you need to know that that's regarded as an explanation, provides understanding across a range of phenomena, and a law is description. These words have changed throughout history but we need to take these common views okay so a law is pretty much uh, what happens uh, and a theory is, it tries to explain what happens so first of all let's have a look at some of these uh, laws uh, this one here is by Proust and these are important for stoichiometry so a compound always contains the same proportion of elements by mass uh, and then we have uh, another guy here who disagrees with that. His name is Berzelius. He showed basically, if you have a compound, you can have some contaminants, you could have gaps in there, you could have all sorts of things happening here, even if the iron is a different charge. Uh, so actually, iron oxide is actually not FeO. It's actually because of the contamination of Fe3+, it's actually 0.84. So basically, Berzelius kind of showed that this here this law of definite proportions has its has its problems. So who wins? Well, this is how we work out who wins. An English monk by the name of Occam, he says that you should shave away the unnecessary. A theory should have explained the most amount of examples and be as simple as possible. So you're gonna choose the most simple theory and you're gonna choose the theory with the most explaining power. So that's why Proust has won out over Berzelius, and that's why chemistry has lots and lots of fun exceptions because basically we're working off uh, theories that help us explain simply the most amount of reality as possible. Okay, jumping over to terminology now, please have your terminology clear from uh, this unit if you haven't had it already. An element has only one type of nucleus. Uh, an atom is just one particle. A compound must be two or more elements joined together and you also need to know what mixtures are which is uh, two types of particles that are not chemically bonded if you can see the difference it's heterogeneous and if you can't see the difference it's homogeneous so this is probably best explained with this diagram here all the things like distillation and evaporation crystallization that's to get these mixtures into their pure substances so here we have the homogeneous and the heterogeneous it's like salt water that's like bubble tea if you're in Taiwan. And this one here, pure substances, they can be a, a range of things. So this can fit into several categories. One particular molecule can fit into several categories. So the elements here, here we have elements as atoms. So And here we have elements as molecules. So you can have these overlapping categories here. And here's an example of an element but it's not a compound because it's just one color there. All right, so the compounds here, these ones here, the molecules must be covalent bonds, and so they're called molecules. Ions are formula units. Uh, they must be ionic bonds, and we'll get into that more topic two. Okay, so be please be aware of when you hear a name, be aware of what those things mean. Just to go into a tad more detail, polyatomic ions themselves, if they're positive, they're cations, and if they're anions, they're negative, and so on. The, the non-metals will form anions on the right-hand side, and the metals will form uh, cations on the left hand side of the periodic table and while I'm just jumping to here you, there are certain polyatomic ions and the ones here in bold are the ones you need to memorize but I think it's kind of helpful to see these other ones here and learn them so the it and the eight the one with the smaller oxygen goes for the it and that uh, corresponds to an us or an ic acid so make sure you know these uh, in detail such as this two minus the charges okay so be able to say sulfate is SO4 2 minus. Uh, so that's a fair bit of time here that you need to spend if you haven't done that already. Back up to more terminology then. Just be aware that if you see the little symbol down here, the S is a solid, L is a liquid, G is a gas, aqueous means it's dissolved in water. G, the subscript is down here, coefficient is here. Balancing, you can only change the coefficient. You can't change the subscript because that'll change the chemical it is. Reactants over here, products over here, the whole thing's called the chemical equation. This is called the chemical formula. Here are the states of matter. These uh, definitions here are quite useful. Forces between particles are weaker than solids. 
uh, you're going to, when we get uh, into topic two and three and four, have to talk about uh, more specific intermolecular forces that differentiate solids, solids, liquids, and gases. Uh, another quick review here is the states, a solid, liquid, and gases, and the, the names for changing of states. The difference when they change states is that the energy goes here into breaking the intermolecular forces, and you'll need to name those specifically later, and that's why there's no temperature change during this time. So this would be 100% solid and this would be 100% liquid and there's a change here so about halfway through it's probably 50 50 liquid and solid there's no the energy is going into breaking the intermolecular forces once all that's done uh, once it's just in pure one pure state the extra energy can just go into increasing the vibrations uh, which is the average temperature, which is the average kinetic energy of the substance. And the SI unit is Kelvin, which is 273 added to the degree Celsius. Getting more onto the uh, stoichiometry now, the law of multiple proportions, which was suggested by Dalton. If two elements form more than one compound between them, then the ratios of masses of the second element will combine with, with the fixed mass of the first element will be ratios of small whole numbers. That's just a very complicated way of saying that they were doing experiments and they were working out that there were these number ratios. Here is some more details of um, the experiments or the compounds they were finding and then they were comparing the masses and then they were seeing that these things were going up in a whole number of ratios. So these ratios are basically what we base our stoichiometry on. So when we see an equation we can use these ratios to work out how many particles have gone to how many particles. Reviewing covalent compounds, this is uh, again assumed by the IB, I'm just going over review. These are the prefixes that we put on compounds. We don't put a mono on the, su on the, on the front and we always put an ide at the end. So here would, wouldn't be the mono, it'd just be carbon, and we put the monoxide, and we always change the oxygen to an ide. Ionic compounds, same story. Uh, add an ide at the end, positive ones at the front, negative ones at the end. Make sure they balance, so sodium's plus one, chlorine's minus one, so it's sodium chloride. And uh, let's do just another one, say if it's magnesium, look at the periodic table, that's a two plus. So if it's magnesium chloride, you're gonna need two Cl's to balance that, so it's magnesium chloride. Finally, last thing uh, is an introduction to stoichiometry is for review is balancing equations. Just set out here how to set them out if you're having real trouble. Basically, you do the left and the right hand side here. You write them out, you start with the most complicated one. So let's just start with this one. Sometimes it's not clear which is the most complicated one get it so that it balances here. That changes the oxygens to 13. And now we just need to balance the car, the hydrogen. So we put uh, a seven over there, that makes that 14 and that's 19. The last thing left is the oxygens to balance, but there's two of those, so 19 on two. So I've just put uh, a slightly harder one here for a trick. Use fractions and then times everything by two, and that's how you balance that one.